morning. Thank you for joining us. Tomorrow evening will mark one week since the main highway to Port Alberni and other West Coast communities was forced closed by the Cameron Lake wildfire. Over the weekend, a convoy of goods got through the detour route, bringing food, fuel, and a sense of security to some people living there. CTV's Brendan Strain reports. In the city of Port Alberni, the fear of isolation seems to have lifted. So, I mean, there was a few shortages here and there, but they've got the convoys going and they're making sure the trucks are getting through and there's no reason to panic. All in all, hasn't really affected us too much. Grocery stores and restaurants have been resupplied as the province organized guided convoys for trucks over the weekend. Pepsi was having a hard time coming in and delivering our, pe our pop order. At the end of last week, the JL drive in was running low on a few menu items. We did get it. We just ordered extra this time, so we've got enough just in case the highway has to shut down for a couple weeks. Fuel shortages are still a concern in the community. We're really playing fuel day by day. The regional district CAO says over the weekend, some fuel trucks did make it into the community, topping up some stations' tanks. Others are still on empty, and some have put restrictions in place to conserve what they were able to bring in. It will de definitely have an impact on the community and the tourism season for this summer. The CEO of the Alberni Valley Chamber of Commerce says the closure of Highway 4 has hit all businesses differently. One of the businesses, for example, is a furniture company and they had 30 pieces of furniture that was expected to come in and they tried to find alternative arrangements, but unfortunately that shipment may be sold to someone else. The construction industry is really hard hit by this. Getting crews into Port Alberni from south of Cameron Lake has become nearly impossible and some construction materials aren't coming through. Roofing trusses and whatnot, these are the oversized materials that are not permitted on, on this reroute. Among the many challenges this fire has created, it has also brought the community together. And now what we're seeing is a lot more gratitude, a lot more support. Uh, we're seeing uh, volunteer groups, including pilots, uh, flying uh, people and materials in and out. Uh, we're seeing general public coordinate um, carpooling and supporting one another. While fears of isolation are lifting, the next hurdle is the fear of the unknown and when their main highway could reopen. Brendan Strain, CTV News. The wildfire's effects stretch west of Port Alberni to Tofino and Euclid as well. Businesses in the tourist towns are eager for Highway 4 to reopen. The team at Tofino's Wiccan Inish Inn is optimistic. The high-end hotel says essential services and supplies are arriving, though it has lost tourists to the delays. The beaches are quiet. However, some guests are making it there via flights. Pacific Coastal Airlines and Harbor Air have, have added additional capacity and a lot of, quite a few of our guests are getting through. We're still down about 50% uh, uh, in terms of occupancy from where we would expect to be at this time of year. I'm not really complaining and, and things will turn around. It's a little rough right now for, uh, uh, for everyone, but we're also enjoying, uh, you know, the wide open uh, restaurants, cafes and beaches too. So the hotel's managing director says he grew up in Tofino. He's become used to occasional interruptions, calling it a small price to pay for living in paradise. A firefighter has been airlifted to hospital, hurt while battling the out-of-control wildfire west of Coombs. The Cameron Bluff fire has caused the closure of a key highway since last Tuesday. CTV's Gord Kerbis has the latest on the fire's spread and some of the economic hardships being felt. A BC Parks boat shuttles firefighters along Cameron Lake, the same boat that would have assisted in the evacuation of an injured firefighter on Saturday. The BC wildfire um, are aware of an injury that occurred on the fire on June 10th. The individual involved was transferred to BC Ambulance following the incident. The firefighter was seriously hurt while fighting the blaze at Cameron Bluff and was transported by ground ambulance to a waiting critical care unit that flew him to hospital. As per policy with any injury or accident, a full investigation while conducted by the BC Wildfire Service as well as WorkSafe BC. The injury shows that fire crews are working steep and difficult terrain on a fire that is now mapped at 254 hectares. I mean, I've hiked in there and it's very steep, very tough. And with the fire, the loose grounds, the trees coming down, very dangerous. Esther Verhan has been watching the progress of the blaze since the start on June 3rd 
and is relieved it has mostly disappeared from near the lake. When I woke up this morning and I looked outside, there was no smoke, no flames. So that was This is the first morning. The status of the Cameron Bluffs is changing constantly. Just half an hour ago, all I could hear was the faint buzzing of chainsaws in the distance. Now, smoke has returned to a handful of locations and helicopters are once again in the air. Right now, we're kind of assessing the fire activity and how it responds to the weather that we're seeing today, which might lead to how we're going to attack and apply suppression in the coming days. Highway 4 remains closed, but today a positive sign. Flatbed trucks carrying cement reinforcement barriers drives through the closure. They are part of the rehabilitation plan to reopen the route. That would be great news for businesses like Coombs Old Country Market. Through the road closure, yeah, it's affected us a little bit. You know, we've we've noticed that the, the, the general tourist output here has slowed down a little bit. The market is seeing far fewer visitors without traffic heading to and from the west coast to the island. It's a lot quieter, yeah. Well, we got a parking spot. That was our first <laughs> yeah. clue something was wrong. The market's general manager says this is where many in the province normally come to escape wildfires. In a strange way, it's become very busy for us in July and August in the last two, three years because there, you haven't been able to go to the interior uh, due to the dryness and the wildfires they've experienced, which is tragic. For now, it's Vancouver Island's turn to experience that uncertainty, but hopefully for not much longer. Gord Kerbis, CTV News.